We may finally know how accused killer Brian Koberger is connected to his alleged victims. A law enforcement source tells People Magazine Koberger reached out to at least one of the victims on Instagram. Koberger is accused of stabbing four University of Idaho students to death in their off-campus home in November. An investigator told People Magazine just two weeks before the murders, an Instagram account believed to be Koberger's messaged one of the girls repeatedly but did not get a reply. The source says they were mostly messages saying, hey, how are you? But he sent them over and over again. It's possible the victim didn't even see the DM request since Instagram sends them to a separate folder than regular messages. Koberger's Instagram account has now been deleted, but People Magazine says prior to that happening, it appeared Koberger was following all three female victims. Kayla Gonsalves, Maddie Mogan, and Zana Konogo all lived in the home on Kings Road. Zana's boyfriend, Ethan Chapin, was there the night of the murders, and he was also killed. Terry, with the discovery of these Instagram DMs or direct messages, do you think the prosecution could finally have a motive? And what do you think it could be? Well, you know what, Brian? As we all know, you don't have to have a motive. You just have to show the intent to kill for murder. And we have that, I think, with all of the evidence. But the motive here, I think, might be multiple. The fact that he might have been rejected in his own mind by one of the victims. And we've heard reports that he may have also been rejected by other women that he approached in bars. So he very well could just be angry against women and the fact that he's being rejected constantly. The other issue is we know he has a master's degree in criminology. He was working towards PhD. Maybe he just wanted to commit a crime and see if he could get away with it. He thinks he's smarter than everyone else. So I would combine that if I were the prosecution in this case and go after both those motives. Yeah, rejection, a little bit of catch me if you can. Jesse, if this is all true, why wasn't it mentioned in the probable cause affidavit? I think it could be one of two reasons. One, it's a probable cause affidavit. You don't need to include everything in there. This is not all the evidence to support a conviction against Brian Koberg or just what was the evidence to support him being arrested. They might have still been developing information. And I think the second reason could have been they just didn't know about it. Remember, this is an ongoing investigation. We are going to be learning a lot more about Koberger, or police are, and prosecutors are, between now and an eventual trial. They're going to talk with more witnesses. They're going to learn more about him. This is the start of the investigation. So don't be surprised if there's going to be more that comes out that wasn't in that probable cause affidavit. Yeah, I can't wait for that preliminary hearing. Uh, we'll probably get even more in that as well. Well, thank you both. Authorities in California say a gunman stood over a teenage mother and her 10-month-old baby and shot them both in the head. Deputies in Central California are trying to figure out who carried out a brazen and brutal attack this week, killing six members of the same family. That death toll includes not only the baby, but also a grandmother who was shot while she slept. The sheriff had initially said this was a cartel shooting, but has now been walking that back, saying they're still looking into it. However, he said the home where this happened is known to law enforcement for gang activity. Three people survived the shooting, including a man who called 911 as he hid inside the home. The teenager and her child were not so lucky. She was found, along with the infant, laying next to her mother, his mother, down the street. We believe that the 16-year-old teenage mother and her small infant actually was fleeing and running from the scene. What we have since learned through forensics that it was clear that the shooters stood over the top of the 16-year-old mother and fired rounds into her head. The 10-month-old infant also suffered from the same attack. None of this was by accident. Terry, it seems like the authorities are pulling out all the stops and putting in every resource they can. What do we know so far about this? Well, you heard the sheriff there talking about how horrific this crime was. And because it was so outrageous, they do have local, state, and federal agencies. And he said that, and I don't want to get this wrong, so I'm going to take a look. The crime lab is out there on the scene. Forensics, gang detectives, homicide detectives, the California Department of Corrections is on the scene. And he mentioned also that federally on the scene was 
ATF, FBI, Homeland Security, DEA, and Department of Justice. So they are pulling out all the stops here. They're making sure that they have every agency that they need on every level. And not only that, they're asking the people in the community for help. There's a tip line and there's a reward. So they're going to do all they can to get these people or this individual, whomever did it, and make sure they're behind bars at some point. Jesse, that's a lot of three-letter agencies. How do you think they will track down the suspects? Yeah, Terry t uh, touched on it a little bit. Uh, I know that they've asked local businesses and neighbors to review their surveillance footage from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Remember, this is a small town farming community, so who would be out there at that time? It kind of narrows down the list of suspects. If this is, in fact, gang-related, perhaps authorities have confidential informants in these gangs to find out what exactly they know about it. That $10,000 reward is currently a $10,000 reward for more information. But given the gravity of this, I wouldn't be surprised if that number actually gets larger and more people might come forward. And also, as Terry mentioned, police and authorities were very quickly quick to process the scene, to contain the evidence, and try to get a result as quickly as possible. So that window of escape for the suspect or alleged suspects is definitely going to narrow down. All right, we'll see how the authorities narrow down, as you say, that suspect list. And if there is an update, we'll make sure to bring it to you.